simple. Imagine a capsule filled with people hovering inside a tube, moving faster than a jet. We're not a plane, we're not a train, we're not a car. It's a Hyperloop. Hyperloop. In 2013, Tesla founder Elon Musk sketched out his vision for a levitating pod that would carry people through a tube. Then he challenged others to design and build it. It's not exactly a new idea. As far back as the 1800s, New York built a pneumatic subway, but it was too difficult, too expensive, until now. So actually, uh, our, company was, our, our company was in a garage just a year ago. The CEO of Hyperloop Technologies, Rob Lloyd, a Canadian, takes me on a tour. As you look down over here, you'll see the size of a full-scale tube. Inside a tube like this, a pod suspended in a vacuum holding up to 50 passengers. We use a standard industrial pump to remove the pressure. Removing air resistance means the capsule could travel about 1,200 kilometers per hour, just under the speed of sound. It seems somehow fitting. What some see as the future of mass transportation is being built next to a rail yard. Unlike a train, a Hyperloop capsule wouldn't make any stops. You'd just go straight from where you are to where you want to go. Imagine Vancouver to Toronto in about three hours. Toronto to Montreal in 30 minutes and Montreal to Miami in less than two hours. The ability to commute to work, not just from another area code, but another province. The construct of Hyperloop is like a transportation backbone that will do the same thing for the transportation and the movement of physical things as the internet has done for the digital world. They're building a test track just outside of Las Vegas. By 2020, they hope to start moving freight, then eventually people. I'm fully expecting others to follow, and we welcome that competition. Their main competition? So this is actually um, a design mock-up. A company with the same goal and almost the same name, Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. This is the first time these are actually being seen. I mean, what do they actually do? Their new vacuums have just arrived. If you're traveling from here, in a couple of months, they too will build a test track. The company just signed an agreement to explore building a Hyperloop in Eastern Europe. But unlike its competitor, no one here gets paid. So the way we're doing it is completely different. We are, I would say, a movement more than a company. Experts volunteer their time in exchange for stock options. Trailblazing Los Angeles architect Craig Hodgins was attracted to the project from the start. Good for the environment, yes, but it could change the way we commute, even communicate. So that maybe without, rather than having a meet on Skype, a business meeting, we have a, a business center at the terminal and people zap in from the other city, have a face-to-face -face thing and go, go back home and have dinner with their wife. So this is... The he and his students at UCLA are designing the capsule's interior. Think less bus, more executive jet. We'll exploit all kinds of new media to enhance your travel experience. There are challenges, of course. Safety, for one. The Hyperloop capsules will be driven by computers, not humans. And, of course, the regulations. Getting the permits to build and operate. A huge problem in North America. Everybody acknowledges the fact that most likely not going to be here in California. It's going to be overseas and it's going to connect cities which will be viable in the future. But the hardest obstacle to overcome, they say, isn't the cost or the bureaucracy. It's convincing people this can actually work. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, Los Angeles.